Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and we have the Concept Shikari here, a Morgan Cohen's design, and we're going to get all into it. This is the full review. We're going to talk about sharpening, blade geometry, ergos, the bad things. We're going to talk about everything, and even the steel choice. Now, there is multiple different versions of this. There is a micarta version. There's a fat carbon fiber version with anodized titanium. This is the Damascus version, but there's also 20 CV versions. A lot of people thought that this is was just an etching, that it's not real Damascus. It is real Damascus. They thought it wasn't because they couldn't see the layers when you look at it right there, but you can see them. The camera just doesn't pick it up very well, and you have to zoom in but there are layers and we're going to talk about what kind of Damascus it is here in just a minute when we get into sharpening and the edge retention and testing the steel and all of that stuff. So let's get right into it. First off, this is a big knife. It is not a small knife. It is a big boy knife. And here is a shaman just to give you a little bit of a size of reference. You can see it is not a small knife at all. But with that, man, is this thing comfortable. This thing is so comfortable in the hand. It gives you so much leverage. It almost feels like you have a fixed blade in your hand. And you wind up getting a lot of the benefits that you would get in a fixed blade in this knife as far as control and cutting performance. But first, let's get into the action, and then we'll get into all that stuff. So, it is thumb stud deployment. However, it, you do have the ability... Ooh, that was my fault. To front flip it. You do have the ability to front flip it. Now, is it designed for front flipping action? I don't think so, but it is still very easy to do. Now, if they would have put the jimping over this peak right here, it would be even easier because you do have to kind of hold it like right in the middle, but it is still very easy to deploy. I just don't think that that's what it's primary. You know, I don't think, I don't know if they were even going for it to be honest, but you can do it. Now the thumb studs are very well placed, super snappy, very easy to deploy it. You have so much leverage in your grip around this thing and it being a bolster lock because you see how they have bolster locks are basically a titanium, well, it doesn't have to be titanium, but in this case, it's a titanium frame lock with carbon fiber over the, the, the scales. So we have an overlay of carbon fiber over the titanium frame lock. Now we have Damascus steel, and it is real Damascus. We're going to get into that here in a moment. But the it stops you from squeezing the lock bar you know, from locking yourself out because you're holding the carbon fiber instead of the lock bar. And that'll work also equally for left hand because of that reason. So you can spidey flick it off of the thumb stud. Yes, I have two band-aids on. It happened at work today. I picked up a pallet and it had a whole bunch of splinters on it. And my hand basically was like I grabbed a porcupine or something. So uh, I'm just covering it up for YouTube reasons. Anyways, the... The thumb stud action is really, really nice. Very, very easy to spidey flick. They're very well placed. The detent, you know, it's a great detent, very well tuned, but because the blade is so heavy, it almost feels light, but it's not at all. Like, it's perfectly adequate. Now, when you unlock it, the clock bar is super duper comfortable, very easy to engage. They left you plenty of access, and this thing is an absolute guillotine. So, you know, if you hold it down too far, it is going to come down and hit your nail. So, you do want to be cognitive of how to disengage it because it, it will get you if, you know, if you allow it. I mean, I'm not saying... You shouldn't be worried about it. Just know how to control it. A lot of times I disengage and go go from the side like this and then pick it up and let it drop. But you can let it go down and hit your nail. You can also stop it right here, but then you're going to hit the detent ball usually. So, you know, then you can control it with your pointer finger here and just go like that, then lift it up. There's lots of ways to do it, but very, very uh, false shutty, very guillotine -y. 
<laughs> that's a word but yeah it's incredibly smooth it is running on ceramic caged bearings so that's um one reason why it's so smooth and it has a um a nice size detent ball in there with a nice large size steel lock bar insert nice strong lock up it is rock solid in all directions um very very solid now another thing i really like is they're using a t10 pivot T10 pivot, T8 hardware, but they do have a couple T6s right here and on the clip. And the stop pin is also a nice big size. So they hit all those things, which I do like to see, especially on a large knife like this. You want to make sure that the other parts are also nice and, you know, they, they make sense for the size of the knife. Now, Ergo's. Super comfortable in the hand. I mean, this thing, you every grip, no matter what, this thing is comfortable. Everything is rounded and chamfered really nicely. There's no sharp spots at all. And it's comfortable back here. It's comfortable in the push cut grip. It's just super duper comfortable everywhere you hold. Now, because of that, it gives you maximum amount of leverage into your cuts. I mean, you you can put all the pressure you want in this, and it's super comfortable. So, with the geometry, this thing cuts like a beast. It's a nice, broad, big, tall blade. Now, the geometry comes down to about 20 thousandths, give or take, because it does have a little bit of a tapering um, edge bevel, but it's right around 20 thousandths. Now, that is fantastic for this size of a knife with this geometry. So because it has that, you know, that nice thin edge for the size of a knife, it cuts really, really good. It has a lot of room to go up and get to the thickness of the grind. And then you have a nice swedge up here up top for the material to go around. You know, it gives it a little gap up here for the material basically to have like air or whatever space to kind of wrap around the blade. And it cuts so good. I can even slice little tiny feathers on cardboard because it's just super slicey and the geometry is great so now the one thing you're not going to uh where it's gonna kind of you know not do so good is the utility cuts the the belly is just so big it just has such a big belly so you're gonna have to lift up really high to get to utility cuts but this isn't that kind of knife so most likely you're gonna wind up using the belly to do those type of cuts or you're just gonna you know lift your hand up that high and just deal with with the you know it being uncomfortable to do a utility cut if you're facing downward and the objects are like right in front of you you know but for like opening things up from the sides or anything like that it'll do just fine it's only when you're like facing downward at a table or something that it's going to be an issue but this is labeled as a hunting knife or at least for its best uses which i think that this is a great example of a hunting folder one you can get a lot of control you know with skinning and things like that and has the perfect blade shape the exact type of blade shape you'd want for that type of job or you know that type of task but fantastic uh cutter all the way around you know just utility cuts aren't going to be its best friend clip and carry clip and carry clip works fantastic amazing clip they couldn't have done a better clip you have one you can grab onto it, so because it's a big knife, it's nice to have good grip on it, pulling it in and out of the pocket, and the clip goes over the pants really, really nicely. Uh, I don't think they could have done a better clip. It's nice and rounded everywhere, so even in the hand, it's nice and comfortable, lands in a perfect spot, no issues at all, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the clip choice. It, the ramp is really good, and yeah, it works really, really good. Now... Next thing, the steel. What kind of steel is this? It's Damascus, but what kind of Damascus? So I had to reach out to them to find out. So it is a 9CR um, stainless steel Damascus. I think the other steels they're using is like 440C and um, maybe one other steel, but it's basically a 9CR and 440C Damascus. A lot of people might think, well, for the price, you'd think it'd be better Damascus. Well, yeah, maybe, you know, we'll talk more about that here in a second, but 
being Damascus, you're more going for the beauty of the Damascus, more so than the 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 edge the edge retention and everything else. But I will say this thing sharpens up very nicely. It takes an incredibly sharp edge. And you know, on the stone, the steel and the heat treat felt very, very nice. I started out with a diamond plate. And I reprofiled on a diamond plate. And we'll get into a couple issues because I got the negatives coming up here. But as for just the heat treat and the steel, it felt really good on the stone. And then I moved on to my Venev stones to, to put a polish on it. Now, this is after use, so I apologize. I did not get any pictures of it but right after I put the fresh edge on there. But it did take a very nice polish. I've just I've used it a lot since I sharpened sharpened it and but, but it did take an incredibly incredibly sharp and very nice mirror edge i mean it sharpened up really nicely and like i said it, it, it took a, a ridiculously sharp edge but the th there was a couple issues that i did run into and we'll get into that here in a second now as for the steel choice, though, you're not going to get the best edge retention out of it. But what you will get, though, is, um, well, one thing I've noticed from use is that it is hyper responsive to stropping. You can get this thing back to a very keen edge really fast. Like after using it, yeah, the edge retention doesn't last very long, but I mean, it's still decent. I'm not saying it's horrible or anything like that. It's decent, but stropping it you can come back from using it all day and just hit it on the strop and you'll bring it right back so quick like i mean it's so responsive um one of the most responsive steels i've even found yet on a strop so that says a lot so it does work out really good on a strop and you can get the keen edge back very very quickly now speaking about the negative things with the sharpening and everything and and some of the issues I ran into. One, you can see they didn't put a good choil there. So one, you get a smile. Two, you can see the steel is thicker here and it comes down lower. So going on the stone, you're kind of riding that area. And I didn't want to get rid of it. Why didn't I want to just put a choil in? Why wouldn't I just put a choil in? Well, they landed the stop pin directly on the edge or directly behind the edge right here. So that makes it impossible for me to cut in a choil right there. If I cut in a choil, I'd have to do it in front of this and have to leave this alone, which could possibly look ugly. Um, and, you know, on the stone, it did have a little tiny bit of a recurve. I did get that out, but that was mostly because of this. If they just would have put a choil here, and even if they had to leave the stop pin there, even if they had to leave the stop pin right there, they could have um, left that right there and then just didn't don't start the edge until like right here, right? And then just like leave a cutout from this point and go forward. Your finger could almost still block it. Like, I just don't see why they, they brought it all the way back to there where they put the stop pin. It makes it a little bit more difficult for you to one, put in a choil in the future and two, it, it makes it harder to sharpen that area. That area makes it very difficult to sharpen. Now, I did wind up working it out. And now from here on in the future, I'm probably just going to have to leave this there and sharpen up the blade right here. Even if I do sharpen it out, I got to make sure I don't hit this area inside there. So I'll probably just sharpen straight up this direction. Uh, but... You know, like I said, I can keep it going for a long time with a strop, so I'm not too worried about it, but it does make things easier. Now, next thing. I'm not a big fan of the T6s. I wish they would have just did T8s. They already had the T8s down here. Could have just used one bit for everything. I don't mind this T6, but the rest, they could have done T8s. I would have liked that a little bit better. Um, next thing is the price. The price of this is 
you know, it's pretty expensive, especially for 9CR Damascus. Now, yes, you can get this in another steel, so not a big deal. And this one is more expensive with this Damascus, but this is like damn steel prices. And even though I do think this has some similarities to like a damn steel being, you know, like a powdered 9CR 440C Damascus, that's a, you know, it's a stainless powdered Damascus. I, I think, um, you know, it gets really good results and i think it's a really good steel it's just as of right now we can get it in a lot of budget knives for you know pretty affordable prices so i just i don't i you know i think the the price could be a little less now for the 20 cv version i i understand it and you know i guess you know you are paying for the beauty more than the steel but you, you know it, it is a good steel still so i'm not downplaying the steel saying it's a bad steel it's a really good steel it works out really good so um, they, you know, I'm not, I know, I understand when people buy Damascus, it's more for the beauty than for the edge retention or anything like that. And this is still going to get good edge retention. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying that there's a lot of knives like with the same build, the same material, same everything for much less. And these guys, you know, they stand out as more expensive they should bring the price down a little bit this is a, a little bit too expensive for this knife but you know not saying it's not worth it i mean it's an incredibly well-built knife you're getting good quality great build great everything so i'm not saying it's not worth it i'm not saying that i'm just saying that they they could bring it down a little bit and then they'd be a lot more competitive and they'd probably make more sales with this model now um, and I know there's a lot more factors that come into play when, you know, figuring out a price. Next thing, you know, the, like I was saying, the steel choice for this, I don't really mind it so much, but they could at least put it on there. No, Damascus is not a steel. So, when, you know, when people look at this and they see Damascus, that doesn't say anything. So, Put it on the description. Say what kind of Damascus it is because it doesn't do you any justice when people have to reach out to the company and like try to figure it out and play games where they're like wondering like what kind of Damascus is it? That's just a process. That's like taking titanium and calling it anodized, right? That's it. Just anodized. Anodized what? anodized steel, anodized aluminum, anodized titanium. So, <laughs> you know, same thing with Damascus. Damascus is a process, not a steel. So say what kind of steel it is. Now, other than those things, really, all in all, man, I really like it. I do like this thing quite a bit. I like using it. It is one heck of a user, and it's it's a workhorse, man. This thing is a beast, and if you have so much control, and that's why it kind of feels like almost like you're like you have like the a lot of benefits you'd have in a fixed blade, you know, where you have a lot of control, really good geometry, and you you have a very comfortable grip so that you can put a lot of pressure and even though it is a big size it it feels very easy to wield it feels very comfortable to use and you and you enjoy using it because of those things you enjoy you know having such a great slicer with so much leverage behind your cuts it just makes it very enjoyable to use but and you know it's incredibly incredibly well built very nice knife and it does come in multiple different options there you guys go i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace